The berry is, um, is an extraordinary gift, an extraordinarily generous gift from the Carr family, Elspeth Carr to be precise. And uh, it was felt they'd bought significant pieces of land, hand, hung on to them over the years, and then in 1946 gifted them to the then Solcombe Urban District Council. The lands, for some reason, were then transferred across to the Southams District Council, which were newly formed as the, as the district authority. Uh, the land was, was given over to the, uh, to the town to be used for uh, recreation and uh, as, as pleasure grounds, to use the correct terminology on the conveyance. And for that reason, uh, it, has, uh, it has been leased back to Solcombe uh, by District Council on a peppercorn rent, and that lease comes up for renewal in August. The car land, in fact, that was given over to, uh, to Solcombe Urban District Council uh, was then enhanced with some unregistered land uh, which gives us the total area that is the Berry today. Uh, that includes some extra woodland, virtually half the football pitch, and uh, one or two other portions of land as well. It seems that the lease is due for renewal. Town Council have indicated that they are willing to renew that lease, but at the same time there has been an ongoing suggestion, because of the conveyancy document, that the town could re-adopt the land and be transferred back from Southampton District to Salkham Town Council. This seems to me to be a very good idea. They've had 25 years of maintaining this land and looking after it, mowing the grass and cutting the trees back where necessary. Um, but it does appear that the gift back or the return back of the land comes with one or two caveats. In fact, three caveats to be precise. Cliff House Gardens, New Cross Gardens and, uh, and uh, of course Courtney Park as well. There's a lot of cost in, involved in running those pieces of land. Uh, looking after them. If they've got play equipment on, they need to be maintained, they need to be insured, health and safety need to have a little look at them and make sure on an annual inspection basis, and of course the general maintenance of the, of the land itself. They've asked to keep one piece of land back, a piece of land that wasn't included in the original car gift. And it seems that this piece of land will be ripe for development for the District Council to benefit from. It seems a very strange dilemma to me that, or a strange business decision, that a, a local authority like the Town Council would consider taking on significant costs to regain the berry but give away part of the family silver in a piece of land that could well be worth in excess of a million pounds. And I don't quite understand the, uh, the thinking behind this. We're familiar with the cost of seawalls. Kingsbridge had a collapsed seawall on their quay. It took them quite a few weeks to repair. Significant cost. The seawall at Cliff, Cliff House Gardens is, is huge. I, I, I dread to think what it would cost. They can't afford to replace the cost of the Jubilee Pier. So how on earth would we be able to afford to replace the seawall at Cliff House Gardens? It would mean that land would probably end up falling into the sea and that lower part of the Cliff House Gardens be closed to public access. It's a real problem. Those are the main concerns. We've got the online petition at change.org where you can go and you can sign up to, to show that you're, you know, want to support the town in getting the berry back. July the 12th, there's a full council meeting. Um, they're hoping to discuss the commercial agreement um, that's going to be in place for the berry and the and district council to give us the berry back. Um, so there's an open forum at half past six. So if we can get as many people along to that as possible, that'd be brilliant. And you can voice your concerns and ask any questions you've got about the situation, about what's happening. Um, and that's really how we can get involved in, in, this, in this situation. I think that the agreement that, that has already been discussed with Sulcan Town Council and Southampton District Council will just be ratified and we'll end up taking back um, all of the properties they suggested and, and, and having the maintenance costs on our own shoulders. Um, and as Robert said earlier, you know, that's a significant cost and we could really struggle to maintain a lot, many aspects of those parks and, and the seawall particularly. So, you know, you really need to come along voice your concerns, get involved in the debate and, and, and get an outcome that's best for Sulcan.